Should Welcome back to another Q&A video. Sure have a Thanks so much for coming in. I'm going to try to find all the questions that you All right, so Ms. Keepers asked me last week, but I didn't get to it. I did some research on income taxes and online retail, which leads me to get uh, your opinion on or view on the particular on the practicality of gaining experience selling online by only selling things initially from your home versus selling any item bought or purchased ex exclusively for profit there seems to be a thin line for tax liability between selling or trading as a business as opposed to selling personal items knowing what you know if you had to start out selling a few things would you jump into it for profit as a business or start with selling some stuff you want to get rid of i know your answer would be just your opinion is you're not a tax professional so i'm interested in your views for purely informational purposes well that's that's pretty much all i can give you is my opinion because i don't know anything about taxes everything, everything has always been handled by my accountant my husband is in his own uh business as well so we we've always itemized and had no idea that there was a difference between whether you're selling uh to get rid of stuff or whether you're buying and selling uh you know as a as a picker as to for profit so i'm not even sure i know i'm a hoarder and i just i have so much stuff that i've always had to get rid of it some way or another and that's just inevitably how i i fell into this business and then just to get rid of my excess stuff because i just cannot resist a bargain and that's how i fell into this business so please if anybody else knows anything about it let me know about it i know you do have to pay taxes i filled out my tax forms for all of the venues that i sell at and all right, now on to the next one. Chapman says, I love your glasses, but couldn't find your video where you mentioned the brand. And I did leave Miss Judy the link to the, to the Zen. Is it Zenny or Zenny? I don't know. But anyway, it's the online site where they sell the glasses really uh, inexpensively in wonderful styles. And just, I love it. I'm so addicted to that. S keepers or S keepers. But anyway, Thelma, this was a good Q&A. Thank you for answering my question. I hope you don't mind. I ask more than one question as far as bags and boxes. Absolutely, please ask me more than one question. I love answering questions. As far as boxes and bags, what sizes do you use to for small to large size accessories and purses? Do you have any packing tips? Do you use a scale? Uh, do you have a system for mailing things? When you use some of the services like Poshmark, do you have to give your personal address? I'll start with the Poshmark question. It does come out on the label because they send you a label. It's on the label, but I guess you could scratch it off. A lot of um, envelopes, and I recycle paper bags, and I reuse them either as wrapping for the boxes or uh, if I have, let's say, a DVD or something, I'll bubble wrap it and do everything else, but then I just put it in that bag and tape it all up really secure. I have actually won a scale from um, one of the YouTubers here. Um, I think it's Michael Pierce. He had a giveaway and I won it and I really was so happy to, to win it. And then I haven't even used it because I'm just so used to using, uh, you know, just my own experience as to what I think something will cost. I pretty much already know, you know, that handbags is $10, a piece of jewelry, anywhere from three to $4, depending on where it's going. And I don't really have never believed in overcharging for shipping. Now, if it's two dollars uh that i charged and it was a dollar fifty i'm not going to make a big fuss about returning the 50 cents i don't do that because i feel like it's shipping and handling and i'm paying for my time and my gas and everything to get to the post office so if i sell a huge coffee table book or something and the person paid me 80 dollars for it i'm not just going to wrap it and send it i'm going to box it i'm going to put you know all kinds of uh, cushion and and negative space filler and all of that stuff i know how to uh, mail something securely and um, i got something from ebay and it was a beautiful little james avery ring but it was almost popping out of the envelope it literally had torn the guy just wanted to put a 30 cent stamp on it or whatever it was at the time and it was literally just like almost out of the envelope from rubbing against it he just stuck the ring in an envelope i don't know what that was about um, for purses as well i just try to get um now if the purse is a soft leather bag and can stand to be Fold it. It's not going to damage it. I will fold it. I, you know, I maybe fold it in half or fold the bottom up and, and all of that. But I love purses. I'm not going to mail you a purse and damage it. That's not what I'm, you know, just to save a buck. I'm not going to do that. And if I have to, like some of the bags, I just sold one. one I just sold a bag the other day that I thought if I folded it or compromised it, size in any way, she would get it and, and freak out on it. So I didn't want that to happen. So I, I actually stuffed it and put it in a po in a box, just the perfect size for it. And hopefully she's happy with then it. And from Lisa, 
We have, hi Thelma, I have two questions for you. Have you ever sold items or I, an item and then regretted it? And if so, what were they? Have you ever not taken an offer and regretted not accepting it? Thanks again. Uh, yeah, I do. I first put my keep all out. I was offered 600 and I thought about it and then I thought, no, I had just put it out. I mean, within 20 minutes. So I decided not to take that one. And then there was another one for another Louis Vuitton that I, I kind of regretted not taking it, but then it, cause it took me probably another six months to sell, to sell it. So, but I still made more money waiting on that. So that doesn't happen too often where I accept offers that are regrettable. I have sold many, many things that I have regretted, uh, starting with a turquoise ring that I love that I had since I was a teenager. And I actually had two, one was mother of pearl and the, and all mother of pearl, I believe. And then that one was, um, black onyx and turquoise and it was a huge about this size but it was inlaid kind of like a flower and it was gorgeous and I I regret selling that I kind of wish I had it but I do that with everything there's I have lots of pangs I have some uh James Avery bangles that were gorgeous and some of them had the ichthys all around it some of them had some bible quotes but they had gotten big on me and um I sold them and then I I kind of feel bad about it that I wish I had them but they were they were heavy and they were falling off of me and but I like I said I separation always... anxiety definitely but I have so much like right now I'm selling um a Tiffany necklace that a gentleman has offered me pretty close to what I want but not quite what I want because I'm still I'm really slashing the price on it and I keep second guessing myself on that necklace but then I keep thinking you know I know that I'm not wearing it as much as I should, and I don't have the time to, to wear all the pieces that I have. So I just kind of like feel, I try to remind myself that I'm really just a curator. We all are pretty much in this world, aren't we? We only hold on to things for a little while, and then we can hopefully let somebody else enjoy them. And I, I, I sometimes think about leaving things for my daughters, but... And I, I do, do, and I have planned to give them many of my, my pieces, but I also I'll... know that only one of my daughters is a true jewelry aficionado. The other two, the elder ones, they are, they, they like jewelry, but they don't love jewelry. Like I love jewelry and, and they, some of the, they have actually criticized me for it and made fun of me for it. And, you know, but that's just the way I am. I will actually put jewelry on to go to bed. Now I'm not going to say I'm going to put all. Actually, I do go to bed with all these people. But sometimes I'll be, I'll take a bath and I would have taken my rings off after, and then I get out of the shower and then I'm like, oh, I haven't worn that in a while. I'll put it on to go to bed. That's, that's just the way I am. And art deco bags. I love them. I cherish them for many years. I collected them for a long time. I went to the ends of the earth to find them in some places. I went to the most seedy places for garage sales and, um, you know, so-called antique stores and, and anyway, but I loved them when I had them and then I sold them and then I, I, and then I see some people selling them on Etsy now and, and, or sporting them. And I'm like, Oh, I used to have those. And you know, you, you feel that way sometimes, but that's kind of just what you have to do when you, when you're such a collector and a hoarder, such as me, you just have to get rid of them. But um, yeah, those are probably the ones that stand out for me from Bertha. She says, hello, Thelma. What is your take on the new wholesale portal in the Posh app? And what do you think is the best way to keep customers to keep coming back to your closet? I know great customer service, but what else? Love your talks. Oh, thank you. I've gotten the email that says that you qualify to start selling uh, retail. And I guess you buy from wholesalers and then retail. That doesn't turn me on. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. To me, it's just so cookie, cookie cutter. And it's not what I think, um, what I think fashion is, in my opinion. I like... I know when I buy, um, I like to look for things that are different. I looked, I don't always go to the ones that have the perfect picture that looks like it was actually a stock photo. I, I, that totally turns me off. I would much rather have a nice clear picture of someone, you know, just hanging it right there in front of their closet than for me to look at a model sporting some. Just buying a whole bunch of wholesale things to resell does not turn me on either. I would much rather, you know, find a, a vintage piece or... Um, a quality piece at a thrift store or from my own closet and just put it out there. That's the way I feel about Posh. I think what brings people back to Posh to your closet is maybe just consistently putting new things. 
Uh, also, I like to uh, reduce my prices. So I don't know. I think offers, I think accepting offers is really, really important at Poshmark. Now, I'm not saying take your bottom dollar, low baller uh, price. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, you know, price accordingly and be prepared to take an offer. People love the bargain. That's, uh, that's why they're on Posh, buying uh, a lot of pre-owned items is because they do want a, a, a bargain they don't care if you pay 200 for it and then you want 175 because you've used it once they don't care about that they would much rather pay you you know 125 dollars because you paid 200 dollars for it. picture a good description i've always stressed that about posh about any anything really i mean i've i remember on um i wish i still had access to all my old listings on ebay because i remember one guy complimented me on a purse that i sold and I mean, it was just a little quip, but it was about, it was from the seventies and I was something like, if this purse could talk, you know, the stories it would tell bad boyfriends and good times and whatnot. <laughs> and he complimented me on the, on the listing. And he said, you know, just reading the listing was worth the buy or something like that. So that's the way I feel about it. I feel like, uh, make your, make your text interesting, make your pictures interesting, uh, don't just put out one picture and, and expect someone to, to gravitate towards it. Answer all questions. I don't care how redundant. I don't know how many times somebody else has already answered it because those streams, those threads can get long. And nobody wants to go back and have to hunt for your answer. Jacqueline don't be Bridges great. says, great information. I'm so happy to have found your channel. You're so right about needing to add description on Poshmark. Love you, Thelma. Oh, thank you so much. You're so sweet, Miss Jacqueline Bridges. I appreciate that. Liana Carter. Uh, says the fur trimmed yellow coat hanging on your portable mannequin in the background is everything. Love it. Appreciate it. Let me show you that coat, guys. That coat is my mother's. It was her pride and joy back in the 60s or so. I remember going with her to a very exclusive store to buy it. That is Chinchilla a wool yellow mustard. Oh my gosh, it's the most beautiful mustard yellow. It's a swing coat. I may try it on for you. I don't know. A few times um, to some parties and things and every time I wear it I get called out on it that's a vintage coat right oh I love it that's a vintage coat that and it's a three-quarter sleeve too and yeah I remember when my mother bought it she was so happy with it and um and she looks so stunning my mother was is very stunning and um and she has always been a clothes horse I definitely when I when I was attracted to things like rhinestone jewelry and and 50s and 60s uh, aesthetics it was because of her and her best friend Carmen every time I think of designers and um, and posh looking attire I think of those two they were best friends and they loved shopping let me try that coat on for you guys well, let me show you the label yeah it's called the Vogue from San Antonio by Heidi New York whatever those are those beautiful labels huh but that is it there guys and you have to excuse the, the leggings but yeah, so that is a 50 swing coat. I wear it with lots of joy, for sure. Isn't that cute? I love it. Absolutely love hey guys, it. I noticed that the first video, it was, um, the, the mannequin was naked and it was, we, I kept looking at it. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to put something on Okay. There. Now, Alexandra S. says, telling us again about the way to take away the smoke stench from a handbag coffee unused in a cheesecloth or a container Cup in added box i used a lidded cardboard box i found this solution for cigarette smells online many years ago when i had some smelly books it worked quite I've well i've also heard about the um baby powder method in books have you guys tried that sprinkle a little bit of baby powder in uh, take the smell away from books elizabeth as well. fuentes and she says hi thelma great information Thank you. I'd like to know what Amazon fees are for Merchant Fulfilled. What is the fees? I know it's a little bit more than eBay. I'm not even sure exactly what it is percentage-wise. I'm assuming it's something like 12 or 13% because it's it's kind of high. And then they charge the customer the uh, $3.99 or so for shipping, depending on what it is. Uh, but, yeah, they do take a good chunk. They really do. But um, it's still pretty lucrative to, to sell on Amazon. And I don't really have any problem with it. The only concern I have with the used items. I want to make sure it is not marked in any page. It's not missing anything. The covers aren't torn or anything like that. Uh, as far as other things that I've sold that are used, I have sold like patterns and I will state if they're cut or uncut. That appears to be the end of the Q&A number three. Thank you so much for coming in today. 
and um, thank you so much for the questions that you asked last week. Yes. So keep the questions coming. You know, I have quite a few more hauls. I have another haul to bring you. I think two or three thrift store hauls. And uh, I just uploaded some outfits of the day from my um, clothes that I find at thrift stores. And I really appreciate you dropping in. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.